Hi and welcome back. So I did a review of these Ateza gouache collars a while back and I'm overall quite happy with them. There's just like one little thing. And that's the blues in here. In spite of there being four blues, there are not really a cold blue that is not mixed with white. These two, the cerulean and the sky blue, are both mixed with with white. And um, I would like just a, a pure blue. Normally, the uh, the greenish blue would be a Prussian blue, and um, but but for some reason these guys have mixed in PV23, which is a violet, making this a kind of a reddish blue. It's a nice blue. It's all about that, but so there's an ultramarine and that's the PV29 that it should be so I'm kind of missing a, a blue to mix green greens with or adjust the greens that are here I checked with a friend of mine Aurora and she was looking at she got the 60 set and there is no uh, thalo blue or anything like that in in that either so I was a little hmm what to do what to do and then there was um, I sometimes talk to a another YouTuber called Jima Sam. I'll link to his video. Jima is a very nice guy, and I talked to him a bit on different social medias. And he made a comment saying uh, he wasn't surprised that their Ateza their gouache was good because he's tested their watercolors out. And uh, he said they they're on the way to almost being like wash, and that tricked me into thinking, oh, let me have a look at their watercolors because I actually by accident a year and a half or so ago bought this set of the 24 watercolors, and he's not wrong. They they are kind of very opaque their watercolors. So I grabbed these and. Yay, in here we got a Thalo Blue, just a PV15, as I wanted. So I was saying, hmm, that's great, because then I can maybe use the two together. Normally you can easily mix watercolors and, um, and gouache together. So here I am, and I want to try and steal this tube and see if I can use it for mixing greens with the, the gouache colors here. So that's what my video today is based on. We will grab these three greens or yellows, and um, so let's let's try and look at that. I got my melamine, melamine, melamine. What's the name? Plastic tray here. I'm gonna try this out as a a palette. This is a little gunky. Haven't used it for a while. They're okay watercolors. This is just not my favorite ones. I I'm kind of a little bit of a snob when it comes to watercolors. I I like my professional ones the best, and um, I totally admit that. I'm a bit of a snob when it comes to that. So There's lots of other things I'm okay with saving money on, but my watercolors is maybe not the place where I do that too much. Except if I can find some good ones on sale. Oh my goodness, that is really crusty. Let me get the crusts out of the way. There. Now, I have some aspirations this year, and getting rid of some materials is one of them. And this pad of Langton paper is one of the things I want to get used up so it's okay it is just not my favorite 
It's a mold made watercolour paper cold pressed fine grain from Daylan Rowney. It's a 300 GSM. And there's not really any ter excuse me, terrible things I can say about it other than not my favourite. So let me grab the brush here. It's a bit too messy. So, let's see. Now, I think one of the reasons why they haven't put a phthalo blue in the gouache set is because phthalo blue in itself is actually fairly transparent. So, and and the grains tend to be small. So he. When that dries, you will be able to see that uh, you can see the paper through it. Um, I have to lay it on thick to to get a, a more opaque look, but it is fairly transparent. But that's the nature of the the pigment, and if you have professional um, gouache paints, there will be some of the colors that are just naturally more transparent than others. So. Um, Here's a, a green, it's a fairly okay green. And I was thinking phthalo blue is, is quite potent in mixes, so if just the yellow is, is opaque enough in itself, it should be, uh, it should be okay to use phthalo blue watercolor in the mixes. It is a bit transparent but it's all, uh, also a quite wet mix I got. It seems fairly well covering. What I meant was uh, when it uh, has a good mixing strength, that um, phthalo blue, it means that a little goes a long way. So you only need just a little touch of blue to to uh, mix in with the yellow before you get a, a reaction. So uh, here's it with a warm yellow. That's definitely very nice and opaque. So this works quite well. See, I can cover the dark color with the lighter fairly okay. It lifts a bit because it's still wet. So this would be a great way to actually also get my, my Atiza watercolors on the list of things I, I use more. Because I should actually see how many colors are in common and how many are different. So that is a green based on yellow ochre. It's a very red ochre though, so uh, the green turns quite grey, but that is absolutely fine too, that's a good shading colour. And, uh, yellow ochre, the pigment, is, is in itself quite... Um, opaque. 
So it's a great, uh, actually a very good color in gouache. But often it, people more and more try and avoid it in watercolors because it is so opaque. So that that's a that's really that's quite nice. I like that. Sadly, Atisa doesn't sell their watercolors nor their uh, gouache in open stock, so you have to buy a kind of a whole box if you run out of something. If you want to keep with their products at least hmm. one thing I could have done is I, I got Thalo Blue in other brands I could just have used a Thalo Blue gouache from from somebody else and mixed in with my my artesis that is also a, an option well that covers that the greens quite nicely on its own but here you can see it's transparent you can see that green in there but it shines through the blue that's because it's a transparent color There's a nice bunch of, of greens we got there. So let me put my palette and my swatch aside. Please balance there. So let us see a comparison here. So, um, I'll do a speed thing here for the end of this because this took quite a long time. Now I'm picking out the colors that are the same from the watercolor and the gouache, or at least where the pigment uh, mixture is the same, or the same pigments are in there. And um, it took a little while to compare them. And. Um, yeah, I'm a little unsure about the rose, but went with it at the end. Notice there's a difference between the color on the tube, on those two. Um, so yeah, trying to decide here. Some blues. Look, check in the purple that wasn't there. Cerulean blue, sky blue. Yeah, cerulean blue was the same. Greens, same pigment, different names on at least one of them. There was a sap green and there was a pale green and a light green. The sap greens were the same name, but uh, there were there was two greens that had the same pigment number and that was pale green and light green. So here I'm swatching them out. The watercolor is on top and the the gouache on the bottom. And first up is burn number, and it's a quite a reddish and semi-transparent watercolor and but even though it's the same pigment kind of uh, mixture it's totally different the gouache is much darker here is the sap green the watercolor green is much darker than the sap uh, green in gouache the gouache is much more yellow but it's the same pigments that are in there the opacity is about the same um so uh yeah, I'm writing down what underneath what is what, and all the time through here is the watercolor on top, and then the gouache on underneath. Here's lemon yellow, and actually both paints were fairly transparent. It's a Hansa yellow, and it is quite normal that it is fairly transparent. And I, I'm just making a test swatch down through the green already swatched 
So, and up here is now rose. But that was the one where the the tubes had a very different color. And um, they looked a little different when they came out of the tube. But just watching them out, there was not any major differences. The gouache was maybe a little more chalky and a little more pink. Uh, when dry, but I'll go through that later. But wet, there was definitely no difference to see. And the opacity was pretty much the same. Prussian blue, the same thing, uh, semi-transparent. Maybe the gouache is a little bit more opaque, but there is absolutely no difference in the color. So, um, yeah, come on, catch up with the writing. No, not yet. We'll do the crimson yet next. Crimson, absolutely no difference between gouache and watercolor. I, I, if I mixed up the tubes, I wouldn't know what was what. Uh, except if I looked at the tube and read it, but uh, there, there's no difference. It's the same fairly opaque tr transparency that is not there, the opacity. Burnt sienna, not a lot of difference. The watercolor granulated a little bit more than the gouache, but they're almost the same in opacity. So, here's the pale green and the light green beside each other. The mixture is supposed to be the same, but the watercolor is a little more dark. Opacity, about the same. All the, the washes, as I remember, is pretty much marked up as opaque, whether or not they are so that, that information is kind of useless and it's the same thing with the watercolors they are often marked as uh, semi-opaque where they are, I think they are pretty much opaque now here's a light and a mid, mid yellow the light yellow is on top and it's a watercolor and the mid yellow is a gouache same pigment but uh, a little bit different in color so um, but the opacity is the same scarlet Absolutely no difference. And when it's wet, the the gouache looks a little lighter, but it's really not a lot. Oh, no. So we go to the cerulean blue. That was one of those where it's a little bit of a difference in opacity, but seriously, it doesn't really matter. There's a small difference in color as well. The gouache is a little bit paler, but it is. I would only notice because I could put them up next to each other. Uh, if I was painting with them, I would never have noticed. Vermilion, the watercolor vermilion is a little bit darker and maybe a little bit more transparent, but again, it's really out on the small margins where you're talking. There were, by the way, 14 colors that seem to be the same between the two sets, and here is ultramarine. The only color that is marked up as transparent, and it is uh, the gouache is maybe a little bit less transparent than the the watercolor, but really again not by a lot. Black, yeah, they look pretty much the same. Uh, it's the same pigment, very nice and dark black, and I'm trying to thin it out there as this is the last color and have a little bit of space. There's a minor difference between the two. The gouache is a little bit more black than the watercolor, but really not a lot. Here, now they're dried and I'm testing them and I can't tell any difference. It's really only because I know that one set was watercolor and the other was, was gouache. If somebody had handed this to me and not written any information on it, I would have said this is swatches of different uh, colors of gouache. So thank you for watching. I hope this was informative and please like and subscribe and I'll get back with something more later on. Bye bye.